Guys, this is my 2014 Skoda Rapid. It's been on the channel a couple of times now, but you don't get to see it very often. But this is also my 2014 Skoda Rapid, which you've never seen before. Now, I'm guessing you're wondering why I need two Skoda Rapids, and truth be told, I don't. I actually bought this one from Copart as a Cat N write-off. And the only reason it's a Cat N is because it overheated once, and in one very particular spot. So there we go, it overheated here somewhere and uh, it's done a little bit of melty stuff. Um, yeah, the sound deadening is now, yeah, Play-Doh. Um, and obviously, judging by the state of the coolant cover, it got quite hot under here. However, the coolant itself is a nice color and under the oil cap, it looks nice and clean. Uh, so I'm not really worried about anything on the inside of the engine, I think it's all external. But I've never done a fire damage vehicle before. It's gonna be a bit new for me. I don't really know what I'm doing. I've ordered some parts in the box back there. I've got my mate Ryan here with me helping and I also have a donor car, which I'm gonna sacrifice for parts that I haven't ordered. So the reason I'm gonna use my Skoda as a donor car is because I want to get this thing running like completely running, working, everything by the end of today. The bonnet is going to need to be repainted. It's going to take me a couple of days, but at least if the engine's running, we're all good. We can move on. So I'm going to sacrifice my car. Any parts I pull off and put on here, and just order, and I know exactly where they go on that car. Let's crack on with it. Try and keep the screws. Uh, as many as we can, yeah. Clear. I haven't took off the box oh. yet. Oh no. <laughs> what have you dropped now? <laughs> you know that talk screen. <laughs> Take it off the hook there, mate. Nice one, cheers, mate. That's the sun. Do you know what, yeah, it's the first time. Actually, no, I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> yeah, don't <didn't> say nothing. <laughs> it's the first time we've worked on a car where it ain't raining. No, no. Or ruined minus it. two. Ruined it. <sighs> Airbox officially out. Goes. Oh, oh, that was soft. Very much wireless than that. You're going to have to chop it, mate. It's melted, isn't it? Well, yeah, I can see that, Sherlock, but I was just seeing if it pulled out. No chance. Chop, 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 chop. Bought a toolbox with a top for a reason. Why'd you put it so far away then? <laughs> Maybe closer. Do you want to just cut them? Yeah, come. Where's your cars? On the top of the box. Why didn't you leave them on the front of the thing? Because uh, then someone knocked them off. Oh, twat. Not even, they're not even cable anymore, they're just a string. <laughs> How did the string happen? I don't, don't know. The wire. <laughs> Have you done with that snippy thing? Oh, of course it is, it's on the car. It's on the car, mate, so you don't have to keep messing about, do you know what I mean? You're not breaking other things, are you? Oh yeah, because I'm really going to affect the rest of the car <laughs> by pulling that, aren't I? It's still plugged in. Puff and puff all you want, mate. I ain't gonna break that, am I? What's this in? Uh, who knows? <laughs> oh, who keeps leaving tools on the, you! On the engine? <laughs> Why's that chisel? <laughs> I don't know. I'm looking for the magnetic bit, but I'm sure you've thrown that down the engine bay as well. Oh, the coolant's pouring out the bottom. Of the oh, your finger! Just Fuck kidding. Off. <laughs> <laughs> ah! It's stressful working with you, Joe. It's fun working with me. I don't know if it's stressful. Oh, look how easy that was. I don't know why you didn't do this before. Anyway. Lovely.
Hi right, guys, well welcome back. Obviously we got rained out yesterday, back onto the Skoda today, and I've been doing a bit of work before I picked up the camera. So the car is almost as disassembled as it needs to be before I can start putting things back on. There's obviously still a few little, little melted bits that will be replaced, but I'm just using them to sort of plug the hole at the moment, like at this here as well, and, and down here. These are the injectors. And while the injectors themselves are probably fine, the, uh, it's sort of melted the plug onto the injector, so these are clearly no good anymore. And on top of that, I don't have the right tool to remove them, so I've had to use a pair of pliers, which has damaged the lip. So I don't really want to take the injectors out of a working car with a pair of pliers in order to put them in a car that doesn't work when I can just order some injectors and do a push fit anyway. But other things that have been removed, the ECU is out. Not that the ECU is damaged, but I needed to remove the wiring means of the engine bay, which is all gone, including the inlet manifold, throttle body, the, the boost pipe that goes from here to there, and, and a load of vacuum lines, and a lot of stuff has gone. But looking at my Skoda, it doesn't look like I need to, I can build most of the engine back up and still be able to get that injector in. So I guess it's just time to start putting it back together. Okay, so off camera there, I've just done, I put the coil pack on, um, all the, I, I can't remember what I filmed, but the, the intercooler's back in, all the pipes are on, all of this is now plugged in and there's just a few connectors left, which are obviously melty things that we're waiting for parts for. Now, I know at the start of this video, I said I was gonna nick parts off of my Skoda, to so onto that Skoda to get it running. Um, however, with the injector issue, I can't, I can't see the point. Um, I can't see a reason to disassemble a working vehicle to fix a non-working vehicle when I, d I don't even have all of the parts I need to get the working, the non-working vehicle working anyway. So I think, I think I'm just gonna wait for the parts to come. Despite that, it's been a lovely excuse to get my Skoda out because I drive it almost never. So really to finish off working on the car today, I wanna to put the ECU back in, uh, the battery tray back in and the battery and all that, the air box and the scuttle panel and, and the wipers. And uh, I think that's everything. I think that's everything that I've got that can go back on for now. So I'm gonna do that. And then while I wait for parts to come, I've got something else to do. This bonnet is in really good shape. There's no dents but the paint has been affected by the, uh, the fire a little bit. So what better time to paint the bonnet, repaint it, whatever, uh, over the next few days than while I'm waiting for the parts for the engine back. So I'm gonna get this engine back together and then I'm gonna not turn the key, but just make sure everything lights on. Obviously I can't start it, let alone even turn the ignition on because the fuel system's open, the, I've got no throttle body. A lot of things are not here that need to be here. But since I bought the car, I can't even, the, the battery, I'm not even connecting the battery because all the wiring that's been on fire could cause all sorts of shorts, could even start a new fire. So I just wanna turn it on to the first click just to make sure the dashboard lights up and the windows go up and down and stuff. So I just wanted to show you this, this is the ECU. And uh, to get the plugs out, it has a bracket over the top, which is held in with like these security um, security screws. Uh, I spent a long time yesterday hacksawing the heads off so that I could remove them. Uh, all I've done is I've found a couple of bolts of the same pitch thread. And uh, once it's all connected back in, I put the bracket back on, do the screws up, jobs are good. <laughs>
Okay then, well, I've run out of parts to fit, so I've just got to chuck the battery in, just see if it, the car turns on then. This is it. I've got a fire extinguisher ready. I've got the hose pipe just in case. But fingers crossed, all of my hard work is not about to go up in flames. So far, so good. So I guess it's uh, time to see if we have any power inside. No interior light, but we do have lights on the dash. I mean, you notice the bonnet's open. One click. It's, everything appears to be working. Well, what do you know? All the lights are on, everything seems to be working okay. Obviously, we can't test that engine until we have the missing part. But I'm calling that a massive success. Now let's crack on with that bonnet. I've been double busy working on this bonnet. And right now, this is what it looks like. And it looks awful. But the reason it looks like this is because there are layers of filler and uh, filler primer to try and get this bonnet as smooth as possible. Now, everywhere you see bare metal, that is a high spot. It's where it's been sanded down smooth. And everywhere where you see the white filler, that's where it was a low spot. So I'm pretty happy the top of this bonnet is now smooth. I'm not gonna do the whole thing. The rest of it wasn't affected by the fire. So I've concentrated my efforts on this bit. Hopefully it comes out good. I now need to put a little bit of primer on it and then sand it smooth to 800 grit to get ready for paint. <laughs> So that is the bonnet fully primed, all sanded nice and smooth, and I think ready for paint. I do need to do the other side, which I've mainly done already, I haven't shown you, but I just need to tidy it up, prime it and scuff it. <laughs> Welcome back guys, it's another day and welcome to my paint booth. So let me quickly show you around. Obviously the bonnet is here. I'm doing the inside first because I want to paint the inside and then do the outside. I want to do the, the bit that everyone's going to see last. So I have masked the whole edge and I've sort of overlapped it over the edge so that I don't get a build up on the edge when I do both sides. As for the paint booth, I bought this like netting that's meant to stop bugs and stuff getting to your plants. I bought 15 meters by three meters and it is done the whole way around with a join there where the door is in the gazebo. The reason I've done this is because previously when I painted in the gazebo, the two things I struggle with the most, number one is light. I struggle to get enough light in here. I've got some little spotlights that I can put up, but they're just not bright enough. When, when the paint's flying, you just can't see. Number two is airflow. I, before I've been running like a car radiator fan, trying to pull the air out of the gazebo. It's just not strong enough. With this setup, I have a flow of air one from one side to the other that is relatively well filtered and, um, and I've got loads of light. So I'm, I'm going to let you know how this goes. This versus like an enclosed gazebo with a fan. Uh, we'll just see how it goes. But yeah, this is my setup. I'm hoping this one works better than before. Let's lay some paint. I've done all the prep work. I'm already ready. I'm going to run a tack cloth over it and then we'll lay some color.
Guys, what the inside of the bonnet at least that is done now. It's got a set, it's got a dry off, it's got a flash off, whatever it needs to do, what the paint needs to do, and lacquer and all that. But it is done now. I have quickly removed the masking from right on the edge, mainly because I don't want there to be a hard edge, I want it to settle quite nicely, especially when I flip it over and paint the other side. I'm going to be painting sort of right the way under so that, that there isn't like a hard edge that you can see from the outside. But as for the coverage, I am pretty happy with it. There's some rough spots. There is some trash in the, in the paint, in the lacquer. I'm not bothered. This is the inside of the bonnet. It just needed to look good enough. So I'm just gonna let this dry for a bit and then we'll flip it over and paint the other side. That might be tomorrow at this point, who knows. But I'm gonna leave it for now and I'll catch you guys in a bit. I know guys, it's a new day. Last night, I let the clear coat on the bottom of the bonnet uh, dry. And I've flipped it over, I've remasked it, I've sanded down any little imperfections, and I'm just gonna tack cloth it and put the base coat down. So, hopefully, in the next couple of hours, the bonnet is gonna be completely done and ready to go back in the car. Well guys, here it is. Three days of work to get the bonnet back to what it was before a fire. And I'm disappointed. With some things, I blame my painting skills. Uh, it's just not its just not as good as I was hoping it would be. After three days of work, I was really hoping I was gonna get on top of this and get the orange peel sort of like it would be from the factory and it's just not. I don't know if it comes from camera, but it's just not as good. So I'm gonna to have to do some polishing, some cut back and polishing afterwards. On top of that, my lack of professional paint booth means I get a lot of stuff in my paint. Um, I tried my best, but there are just some defects here and there that will hopefully polish out with a bit of work, but it's never gonna be as good as it was from factory or that a professional paint booth sprayer person can do. So yeah, overall, a little bit disappointed. Um, it could have been better. I still think after a cut and polish, it will come out pretty damn sweet. And will you notice? I don't know, black, black generally is quite hard to get to look right, as from what I know. I don't know if blacks are any harder to sort of match than the whites. All I've really painted before is whites, so who knows? We'll, uh, we'll wait and see. But I'm now gonna stop today. I'm gonna let this dry overnight, and then the next time you see me, we'll be putting it on the car along with the rest of the pieces. See you in a bit. guys well the bonnet is finally on uh it's looking pretty good it still needs to be cut back and polished you can't even see it because this sun glare where is it there it is well yeah the bonnet's on i put it mostly back together i am missing one attachment piece for the uh windscreen washers but that's at home i've got it i just didn't bring it with me i believe i also didn't bring with me this sensor this sensor and the new cap oil cap which means probably won't be starting it today unless I start pulling things off my car which isn't really something I want to do I'd rather keep my car running but um, yeah it looks like I'm gonna have to but first port of action is I need to get this engine weather tight so here is where the throttle bolts onto the manifold I 
need to put the new throttle on there. I've also got the pipe that runs from the throttle down to here on the turbo. And then this pipe to here, I'm really struggling to find. I'm gonna have to pull the part number off my car, I think. On top of that, I have two slightly used injectors without a melted plug, which is always handy. And I have an entire fuel rail. Now I didn't need the entire fuel rail, I just needed this sensor on the end here. But buying that sensor was more expensive than this entire second hand fuel rail. So not to mention that the sensor I was looking at was second hand as well. This just made more sense. So I'm gonna start with some vacuum hoses and then I guess fuel system and then air. And then hopefully we might be able to actually turn the key and start this thing. Let's crack on. Unfortunately guys, I'm gonna to have to finish filming this bit on my phone because my camera's run out of charge. I don't have a minute to charge it. All I've quickly done, I've put the, obviously the fuel rail is on. I've put this thing back on. I still need that sensor and that sensor. Um, also the problem I had is, I don't know if you can see down there, but there's water in here from where I haven't had the bonnet on. Now the plugs for the two injectors that were still in the engine were full of water. So I don't want to plug them in yet. The other two I've plugged in, they're fine. I've put the throttle body on with the uh, with the four screws that are required, one there, one back there. So the throttle body's kind of weird, it has like a seal at the bottom, throttle body, and then this like plastic clip thing that holds the uh, the boost pipe down, I suppose. Um, and then yeah, of course, I've got on the top boost pipe that goes from the turbo to the throttle body. And that's as far as I've got. So I'm gonna have to pause it here. Uh, you're gonna carry on watching this in a second, but for me, it's probably gonna be another day or two. But fingers crossed, next time I'm staring at this engine, I'm gonna start it. You guys are gonna see it. I mean, I must start it by the end of this video. So, see you in a minute. So you join me putting the final touch on. And there we go. Let me get you up to speed. So I've finally plugged in the last two injectors all the way back here and finished plugging in the loom underneath this cover here. I have the ignition leads plugged all the way in. I've checked all of the uh, spark plugs, make sure they're okay. Got a new sensor here, new sensor here. This is now tied down properly because I think in the last clip, when it was a few days ago for me, this wasn't screwed down properly, but it was all in place. Uh, the pipe is in from the airbox to the turbo. Um, yeah, and I think that's everything I've today. You just watched me change the coolant bottle because this one, the tiny little like burn through hole in it there, so it's probably not going to pressurize too well. The other problem I've had is the battery a bit low. Not really surprised I've this out for a long time. I've just got it hooked up to my van a little bit of extra juice. There's nothing left to do but to try and start it. Okay, I have a small confession to make. That was not the first start. I had started it already, but for good reason. I thought before I would try and start it, I would check the fuses. Now I found four blown fuses. And after I changed each one, I would try and turn the key to see if it would fire. And after doing all four, it just, it just fired. It just fired up so easily. And as far as I'm aware, all the other fuses are good. The bad news was I didn't have any spare fuses. So I had to steal them out of my Skoda from under here. But I felt that's justified, considering I've had to steal some other bits too. As hard as I tried, I could not find a 
turbo to airbox bike or the HT leads, ignition leads, whatever you want to call them, for less than a reasonable price. Which just meant I had to steal them from my car to put on this car to get everything working properly. It's not the end of the world. I'm sure I'll find them and put them on that car and all will be well. And worst comes to worst, there's a few performance parts, a few little, uh, little tweaks, upgrades here and there that I could do instead of putting original bone stock parts back on. So all I'm gonna do now is let it run up to temperature and make sure that all the coolants run through because I had to change the bottle and top it all up again. Make sure I've got no air locks, make sure everything's running sweet and then maybe just take it for a quick spin around the block. It's not, I don't know if you know, there's a bit of tape over the number of plates so can't go too far. Okay, so first impressions of a little drive around. Really, really good. The engine pulls so nice and strong. No weird noises at all. Oh, it feels it feels brand new. It feels absolutely brand new. Everything seems to be working exactly how it should be. And the gearbox is nice. Obviously, since I own a Skoda Rapid of the same age, with very similar mileage, this is, uh, I'd say, drive better than mine. But then mine is on there, right? So probably doesn't help things. But pulls are so strong. These little 1.2s, they're really good little engines. Really good. So I've just accidentally knocked the aircon on, and let me see that. That's how good the air conditioning is in this car. I <laughs> can see my breath. sanded phase and the polishing phase this is that in-between gap this is going to bring the shine back and it's going to get us ready for the polisher so that's the next step so we can do that now As you can see after one quick pass we've got all of our shine back now just to show you what it looked like before this is just i just quickly write that because there's obviously polish and compound everywhere but this is what it looked like before completely matte look no no reflection at all and this is just one pass of that mop so on camera it probably looks absolutely incredible but in person it's still a little bit cloudy it just needs the polish to uh and a proper polisher to um, you know, really bring that back up. But for a first pass, I'm pretty happy with that. Time to do the rest of this bonnet and then uh, obviously move on to polishing, but this takes forever. So the last stage is to use a random orbital polisher. I'm going to use some uh, auto finesse, what is this, triple all-in-one polish. Should come up pretty nice. I might change to a softer pad after I've done one pass, I don't know, we'll see how it looks. It looks pretty good from here, but it's still cloudy, so blacks really show off how they need a polish or not, so I'm really going to go hard on this.
done guys. It's just time for the uh, final piece of the puzzle. So that's that guys, that's the end of this video, this long drawn out video where I've bought a burnt car, one with a completely melted engine harness, completely melted intake system, all been replaced, everything. Uh, I think even the coolant bottle was melted slightly. The car now runs and drives almost perfectly. There is an engine light on the dash, I'm not too worried about it, it's probably just something not plugged in or a slightly wonky sensor. I'm not worried, the engine runs really sweet, really smooth, really quiet, and quite well, really strong actually. So that's gonna be it from me guys. Now I'm gonna end this video with a few little beauty shots after I've given it a clean. I hope you enjoyed the video. It's been a long one. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.